Sheen Shots. Yeah, boy. Welcome all to the Sheen Shots channel. Today we have what I am calling the Tarnished Pirate build. A playstyle that allows you to put out some insane levels of physical damage and impact while also letting you look like a boss. Dominate your enemies with rapid attacks and avoid more damage than you ever thought possible with limitless dodging. I even threw in an extra sneak passive for some more stealthy gameplay. Play as a sneaky assassin or tough brute. Utilize daggers to the max with multiple attack skills that have very low cooldown time. This is one of the most fun build types in Outward, as it is very straightforward to put together and can make the game much easier, since you can cut down enemy health bars extremely fast and stop them from attacking you whenever you like. If you've never used a build similar to this, I highly recommend you try it, as the Tarnished Pirate build is pretty epic. Let's check out how to set it up. The Heroic Kingdom faction quest can be started by heading into the desert and reaching Levant. You'll gain two passives that are insanely helpful from this faction. You get Alchemical Experiment, which increases our damage by 15%, and Kirowax Breakthrough, which gives us 25 more health and an additional 15% damage bonus. The Kirowax passive can only be learned by taking the Heroic Kingdom faction quest and then purchasing the Levantine Laboratory upgrade for the Alchemist Shop in Caldera. This is optional as it is near the end game, but really does make a difference for harder enemies. Only put three points into mana, as this is not a magic intensive build. We only need mana to infuse our weapons and sometimes use mana push, letting us rely on 60 mana easily until after the faction quest and then we'll have 80. Our three skill trees are going to be Rogue Engineer, Cabal Hermit, and Warrior Monk. Overall, this will give us a nice amount of stamina and really good elemental defense. Rogue Engineer can be found in the slums of Levant, and you are safe to grab every skill here other than one. At the top, you'll find Stealth Training and Pressure Plate Expertise. Both are extremely good, but you can only choose one. I chose Stealth Training because Backstab is really fun with how much physical damage we end up with. Being able to dodge while using less stamina and wearing a backpack is great for the breakthrough point and it lets us focus on combat more than preparation if need be. Cabal Hermit is on the other side of Ghost Pass and Chersonese and we need it for Wind Infuse and that awesome breakthrough point. Mana Push is always great since it does massive impact. And then Shamanic Resonance is what gives us much more defense to the various elements that will be thrown at us. Wind Infuse is better than Wind Sigil here, and will give us insane attack speed and impact on top of the already high amounts we will have. Conjure is not super helpful to this build, but it can be used to summon a ghost, which might help you hit backstab against certain enemies. Lastly, we have Warrior Monk, which really rounds out this build. We get much more stamina from the Breakthrough Point, and taking Master of Motion instead of Perfect Strike will give us more elemental defense culminating in a very defensive build, ready for most situations. Do remember to grab Counter Strike instead of Flash Onslaught, as Counter Strike doesn't get rid of the Discipline Boon upon use, and will let us keep our extra defense longer. If you were going to switch out a skill tree in this build, Warrior Monk would be it. You don't 100% need it, however, I love it for a support tree on this character. Do remember to grab all the Tier 1 skills, as the passives are very helpful. Then pick up the various boon skills as well, because having all elemental boons active will really give us the defense needed for tougher bosses. We need to get two weapons for this build, and those are going to be the Galvanic Dagger and the Marble Morning Star. Craft the Galvanic Dagger with a Shiv, one Shield Golem Scrap, Crystal Powder, and a Palladium Scrap. This should not be too hard to get if you loot Harmattan from time to time. This dagger has one enchant called Midnight Dance that you can place on it after building the enchanting building in Caldera, but it's not required for any reason at all. Next, we have the Marble Morning Star, and it can be looted from ornate chests in the Enmerker Forest area, or bought from the Weaponsmith in Harmattan. The Weaponsmith has a chance to sell it, so you may need to check in there from time to time. 
Now I know what you're thinking. Sheen, maces are much too slow for a rogue build, and it would be way better to use a sword. This is usually true, but luckily I found a way around it. Enchant the marble mace with weightless to give us 0.2 more speed and reduce its weight by half. Really improves the speed of this mace and makes it much better in combat. Now, before we move on to armor, let's discuss why we are using these two weapons. Daggers get a lot of their strength from a skill called Opportunist Stab, which we bought from the Rogue Engineer. If an enemy has the Pain and Confusion Hexes on them at the same time, you will deal six times more damage upon using this skill. It still gives three times more damage with just one of either Hex, but obviously both is better. The Galvanic Dagger inflicts Pain in at most two hits, and the Marble Morningstar inflicts Confusion in about three. Most lower enemies will already be dead by then, but foes with much more health will be significantly easier to take down after these are applied in only a few attacks. Opportunist Stab is really the focus of our weapon choices, making them extremely important. The backpack we want would be Brigands for the extra damage, but then there's no lantern to light our way. We also don't need a free dodge since the Rogue Engineer already gives us that. Instead, it's our job to retrieve the Brass Wolf Backpack from Sand Rose Cave. It has a decent carry weight at 75 and offers two protection to the user while being worn. So in other words, we get more defense and a mean looking bag to make us look good. The Tarnished Pirate has a nice set of armor but does require the use of a legacy chest. First, collect a Kazite Oni Mask. Kazite armor, and Kazite boots from the Assassin Merchant in Berg. She's in the very back of town. Place each of these in a legacy chest to improve their look and their stats. Lastly, each piece of this set must be enchanted with the Assassin enchant. Fully enchanted, this armor combination gives a massive bonus to the physical damage and impact you deal to enemies. The incense required for this enchant is Cesropia incense, and it requires a decay particle to make. Either do the clock tower puzzle to get it, or loot elementals in the following locations. Forgotten Research Laboratory. Old Harmattan Basement. Jade Quarry. Dark Ziggurat. Stone Titan Caves. Sulfuric Caverns. This set is great for our build, as it helps with negative stamina cost and offers protection without slowing us down. The only downside is the additional mana cost, but again, we don't use mana often, so that doesn't really matter. Carry mana restoring foods or just make a few potions and this will not bother you in the slightest. So combat with the Tarnished Pirate is pretty simple actually. We have a variety of skills that can be used when needed and each is extremely powerful. First off, I like to sneak up on an enemy and backstab them. This deals massive damage and will usually knock them over. It can also apply the Pain Hex, and if not, just use a quick Dagger Slash as the opponent tries to get up. Next, I get in a few hits with the Mace to apply Confusion. At this point, I use Brace, and then Mana Push to stagger the enemy. After this, Opportunist Stab can be activated to deal insane damage, and usually kill whatever it is that you are fighting. I prefer to stagger the enemy before Opportunist Stab, as it is kind of an easy skill to miss if the enemy is still mobile. Another thing to remember is that we will still have Counter-Strike and Serpent's Parry if this combination does not finish the opponent off. Serpent's Parry can be hard to land, as it is a counter, but it applies extreme bleeding if the enemy is afflicted with pain, making it a really good skill to master. Oh, and don't forget to use Wind Infuse before you do anything, as that will give you the impact and extra damage needed to knock enemies back with just a few hits, or even one skill activation. That really is about as simple as you can make the combat in Outward. Use your dagger skills and never let the enemy stay on its feet for long. You have basically unlimited dodges with a backpack still equipped, making for very prepared and fluid gameplay. There isn't really anything this build can't handle, and what makes it even better is you look like an absolute beast while on your adventure. For some extra fun, I decided to add a bit of depth to the tarnished pirate by explaining his backstory. Once a part of the great Kazite clan, this lowly pirate shot up the ranks and became a high-ranking member of the pirate organization 
and Arai. Never had anyone seen such a terrifying and powerful leader. Typically, pirates use swords, but not this mate. He wielded a brutal morning star, and it seemed like he could never be defeated. However, as most pirate stories go, there was a mutiny. While on a trip to Sierzo, one of his crew attempted to steal the Morning Star. But our precious Kazite was too smart for that and easily defeated the miscreant. Sadly, this did not end the conflict, as the entire crew had been paid to dispose of him and bring back his powerful weapon to a rival Kazite captain. Without any options, the captain jumped ship, battling the crashing waves of the ocean. Nearly dying from exhaustion, he finally washed up on a beach and proceeded to pass out. Three days later, he awoke, refreshed and comfortable. Oddly enough, he saw a friendly face. Rospa, the dreaded Kazite of Vendiful Fortress, had saved our ex-captain's life and repaired his battered mace. In a bond of loyalty and respect, Rospa declared our pirate tarnished and gave him a new purpose. To hunt down those who oppose power and leadership. To extinguish the flame of unloyal subjects and assure the Kazite legacy live on forever. And so he became the Tarnished Pirate. A fourth member of the band at Vendival who hides in the shadows and only reveals himself to those he deems dishonorable. Be wary as you travel through the land of Arai, should you go back on your word or commit a devious act, the tarnished pirate will find you. And when he does, there's no stopping what comes next.